Hey everyone, this is Theo from ParkerBlocks.com. In today's video, I'm going to review Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India Ink. So in addition to the black India ink that is sold by Dr. P.H. Martin's, they also have the colored versions. You can buy the colors individually or as a set of 12 different colors. Mine is set number two. There is another set which is number one, which features 12 different colors from what I have here. And the bottles, each bottle is 30 ml, but there is also another option for a 60 ml bottle. Now the difference between this bottle and the 60 ml bottle is this is a plastic bottle and there is no eyedropper. So if you were to buy a bottle I would probably recommend you to get the one with the eyedropper because the eyedropper is very useful since I do not have the eyedropper if I want to mix this ink with another color I would have to pour the ink out or I have to get an eyedropper like this to extract the ink out if I pour the ink out I may accidentally pour out too much so some of the ink may go to waste so as you can see this box set that I have bought one particular bottle the cap wasn't kept tight enough so some of the ink actually leaked out but um, thankfully there is still quite a bit of ink left inside let's open this box to let you see the palette that's included so this box actually doubles up as a plastic palette you see here all these are the different mixing wells you can actually use um, the mixing wells to mix the inks if you want to on the back is just a cardboard which you can actually just uh, remove all right let's take a closer look at the bottle from what i can see on dr ph martin's website they currently only offers a variety of 24 colored inks that's not including black even for black colors they have different variations i have reviewed their black ink before so here it says that the ink is light fast and waterproof so that's the characteristics of india ink it's able to hold a line without spreading it flows smoothly without the tip drying it is non-clogging and non-toxic now this is still india ink so i will not want to use this in a fountain pen it's definitely going to clog the pen even though here it says that it's non-clogging let's quickly take a look at some of the colors that i have in set number two this is golden yellow this is orange cherry red tangerine red violet crimson this is yellow ochre, terracotta, turquoise, aqua, Van Dyke brown, and this is sepia. I want to show you yellow ochre specifically now because can you see that the binder, there's this liquid that has separated from the pigment. Can you see the difference between this color and this color? This is actually the pigment that's inside on the wall of this bottle. This is the binder solution. I'm not sure what this solution is. Maybe it's water, maybe it's some sort of binder. But the binder has separated from the pigment. So we see this. The same thing happens here with this terracotta color. So the binder has also separated from the pigment. This is the problem that's associated with all the earth tone colors in this particular set. Terracotta, yellow ochre, Van Dyke brown and sepia. So before you use the ink, you have to shake the ink to make sure that the pigment is dissolve completely but even so it presents other problems which i'm going to talk about later on now this uh, problem with the binder separating from the pigment is not that obvious with the other colored inks like um, tangerine or the red colors or the yellow colors or the blue colors but even so 
I do recommend that you shake um, the ink before using because these are still pigmented ink so if you put the bottle like this the pigment is going to settle to the bottom and when you use the ink with your dip pen or brush without shaking you are not going to get the most concentrated color that you can get so you do have to shake the bottle to uh, mix it up a bit before you use them these are the 12 different colors that I have painted out using a brush. Let's take a closer look. This is yellow ochre and on the right side we have tangerine. Now this is the color where the binder has separated from the pigment. So I tried to shake the bottle to mix it up completely. But even so, I was not able to get a completely flat wash. And this is the wash from tangerine which appears to be much uh, more evenly distributed it looks flatter now the brush was able to create a rather sharp line so this ink you can definitely get very sharp and solid lines without feathering the edges to these strokes they are really very sharp these were drawn with a brush this yellow ochre looks very similar to the watercolor paint that I have. Let's move on to the next two colors. This is golden yellow and this is cherry red. Both are very vibrant colors. This is orange and this is crimson. This is a nice warm orange. And next we have red violet and terracotta. This is the problem with the binder separating from the pigment. Again, I'm not able to get a totally flat wash. You can see the different variations in shape. Not just that, there are some air bubbles here because I shook the bottle a bit too hard and the bubbles they were in the ink and when I applied it with a brush on the paper the bubbles were still there so when this wash dried it left those uh, little uh, bubble marks so that's red violet and terracotta aqua and van dyke brown so with van dyke brown the situation with the bubbles it's even more intensified because the bubbles they do not uh, go away as easily compared to terracotta so I have a lot of bubbles here and I really have to shake this bottle because if I do not shake it I will be painting with the binder rather than the pigment and the problem also appears here with sepia I have bubbles here as well and you can see that this wash is not flat and this by the way is turquoise if this is not the effect that you are looking for then this is going to be quite irritating well at least the lines they are still quite solid and this is sepia so these are the colors side by side by the way there is no pigment information on the bottle so i do not know what uh, pigment is actually used to create this specific color for example this is not like watercolor where they actually list the pigment all right let's take a look at some of the sketches that i have drawn with the inks this sketch was drawn with a dip pen so i used tangerine and i'm not sure what this color is it's either a cherry red or a red violet because these two colors they are really very close very similar to each other and for this color this is aqua this is the closest i can get to a green color because there is no specific green color in set number two so these are the one two Three, three colors that I use for this particular sketch oh and four this is terracotta so I used terracotta for the clouds and as you can see here two things to note I drew the lines first I waited for the lines to dry and then I applied a wash over the lines with a brush 
so the lines when they dry they are waterproof they do not dissolve anymore they do not reactivate so when I apply the wash over I can still get the solid lines like this so if you're going to be using watercolor over lines uh, the India ink uh, this is definitely waterproof and water resistant now this wash here I actually did not dilute the ink with water so this is how it looks like because the binder has separated from the pigment and here you can see the wash it's a bit runny and the uh, color is not totally flat the binder actually likes to collect together so i have to use a brush to spread out the ink so these are the little air bubbles let's take a closer look here so with the ink and with this dip pen i was able to get thin lines very easily and thick lines here this is the wash of terracotta and notice that the lines they are very solid I can get very thin lines very easily and when I lift up the pen there are no blobs at the end of the stroke not unlike some gel pens so the lines they are very solid the paper that I'm using is quite smooth and with the dip pen it actually uh, feels quite nice to draw on it's not that scratchy although if I move the pen up like this it's going to be scratchy but when I pull the pen down like this it's quite smooth and the ink flows quite well this only applies to colors that are not the earth colors so for yellow ochre, terracotta, van dyke brown and sepia it's a bit difficult to get the ink flowing so for these colors the ink flow is quite good this is another sketch that I drew with a dip pen I tried to use as many colors as I can for the line art and I applied watercolor over the lines when the ink was dry this color is Van Dyke Brown because the ink likes to collect together I have difficulty actually drawing this with the dip pen I actually have to use the dip pen to spread the ink around and as you can see here the ink it doesn't flow that well so I have some difficulty drawing this but for other colors the ink they flow really well you can see the lines they are really very solid and when the ink is dry you can apply watercolor over the lines and this is quite nice the ink is waterproof using colored inks for drawing can be quite fun because it adds that extra level of vibrancy and also variety as compared to using just black ink for the lines so this is definitely much more fun to use to draw with this sketch was drawn with the help of a reference photo if I were to draw this outdoors on location I will need to find some way to bring these bottles out and I have to make sure that they do not leak in my bag if not it's going to be really messy and it's going to maybe destroy the bag because these are pigmented inks they are very difficult to wash off so that's the inconvenience of using such inks outdoors and because these inks are pigmented they are not safe for use in fountain pens so the tools that are safe for use with these inks would be the brush and the dip pen which I'm going to show you right now one issue that I have with this bottle design is when I uncap it I usually see this piece of paper stuck to the top of the bottle this should actually stick to the back of the cap and it doesn't so I have to remove this and squeeze some glue onto the back and stick them together which I have already done but the glue has not dried so that's why this paper is sticking to the top of the bottle again let me use another bottle this is all right this works here so I'm going to use this color today one important thing to note is if you're going to be using your dip pen like this 
make sure that the pen nib is very clean if not you're going to contaminate the colors inside so I'm going to try and write some calligraphy so this ink flows quite nicely and it's beginning to run out of ink so let me just dip it again all right this is going to take a while to dry because the parts where i press down harder it deposits more ink so this part and this part is going to dry a bit longer another thing to take note of is this now the bottom of this bottle this base here is not very big if you are going to put this on the table if you accidentally knock on the bottle it's very likely to topple the bottle so make sure that it's capped at all times or make sure that you're holding the bottle at all times because I actually accidentally toppled this bottle earlier on but thankfully the cap was on if I want to change the color, I have to clean the pen nib. If not, it's going to contaminate the other color, so I have to clean it properly. I usually just wipe it. And now I'm going to mix some colors together. This is where the eyedropper will be very useful, but since this bottle doesn't come with one, I have to go by myself. So I'm just going to put one drop here because these are really very concentrated to make it a bit more convenient I'm not going to be using that same eyedropper because I do not want to clean that so I'm using a separate eyedropper so with yellow and blue hopefully I can get some uh, green that's lacking in this particular set I can get some sort of green and let's apply that to the paper one drop from each color is definitely not enough so I added more drops and this is what I can get. The colors mix quite nicely, quite evenly. And now let's move on to the problematic colors. This is terracotta. I can feel that the ink is a bit sticky. Also, this opening is a bit small, so when the ink runs low, it's going to be very difficult to put the dip pen into the bottle. So that's the other disadvantage of this bottle. Oops, looks like the ink has dried out. The ink flow is definitely not as good compared to those uh, primary colors. And I can feel that this ink is really sticky. Next we move on to Van Dyke Brown. I can feel that the ink is very thick. I mean the ink still flows but it's not as fluid compared to the primary colors. For sepia, I'll be using a brush. So you can see that the ink is really very thick. You see the pigment it's really not easy to create a flat wash with earth colors these inks are definitely better for creating line art if you want to use them like this with the brush why not just go for watercolor or gouache because um, if you use them like this there's really no advantages over uh, paint medium but for drawing lines like this this is really nice so when the ink is thick it looks like it's opaque but as it runs out it's not that opaque anymore this has almost dried and it seems that the color on top is not totally opaque this is orange or maybe this color boom boom this has almost dried and it seems that the color on top is not totally opaque or at least this particular color is not totally opaque but I have a feeling that all the other colors they are not totally opaque as well even though they may be very concentrated 
And lastly, India ink stains are quite difficult to clean off, so you might want to have a palette dedicated for just India inks and another palette for watercolor. So these two mixing wells, I used them earlier with India inks and now they pretty much stain the surface and it's very difficult to clean this off unless I actually go and scratch them off or use the magic eraser. Overall, I feel that these inks, they are great for creating line art. I love using them to draw and also to write. If I want to paint with them, if I want to use a brush, I would choose gouache or watercolor over these inks. As I'm recording this part of the video, I just found out that this bottle has licked some ink out. So this is the stain. So that brings me to the downside of the bottle design. So as mentioned earlier, oftentimes when I open the cap like this, that piece of paper or plastic thing would just stick here. And if you do not put it back properly, if there is a gap somewhere and you do not put it back properly and you put your bottle down like this horizontally, there is a chance that it might actually leak so it's quite problematic so i do recommend that you get the bottle with the eyedropper at least there won't be this kind of problem the color selection in this set number two is quite all right i love the primary colors but i'm not particularly fond of the earth tones because they separate really easily with the binder and that's all for my review today. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.